Good evening. We are in week seven. Week seven. And the letters for messages of the heart this week is S-T-U. S-T-U. Yes. And that's salvation, trials, and understanding. And I've been waiting for a while to get the inspiration on what to use. Because like I said, in my previous um, messages of the heart from the heart, videos when I first started back in 2013. I uh, have different uh, subjects for the letters and this is the kind of situation that can go on and on. I can do messages of, of the heart from A to Z next year and have a whole another set of uh, words for the alphabets. But these are the ones that I've chosen for this second project that I've done for messages of the heart. Let's start off in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to be alive and well and um, being here to give some uh, knowledge and inspiration to your children, Father God, my brothers and sisters out there in Cyberland. And Lord, I just pray that you use me the way you want to use me so that uh, when they hear what I have to say, Lord Jesus, that they'll be able to hear you speaking and see and you give directions for their lives in the name of Jesus. God, I just thank you so much for loving me so much, God, that you changed my life and changed it in a way where I know that it was you changing me, Father God, and not my own self-doing. I praise your holy name and ask for wisdom, ask for discernment, ask for leadership and guidance uh, as I go Fourth, in what we're talking about today, all of this is messages of the heart, Father God, and I thank you for your guidance and leadership in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, excuse me, I try to uh, keep it short, 30 minutes at least, and uh, try to hit on, on uh, three points, not three points, but three letters within that 30 minutes, and uh, normally I try to... Um, not tarry long on uh, on one certain letter unless, you know, it just gets pretty good to me. <laughs> so, um, first and foremost, I want to say that uh, if you're joining me for the first time, uh, I have a medical condition. I'll be stuttering and, and can't get my words out and stuff like that, but it's all good. Uh, that's why I pray. So, uh, no matter what happens out of my mouth, <laughs> it'll be the mouth, uh, something coming from the mouth be of the spirit. Uh, I have this book that one of my coworkers uh, turned me on to, and um, it's... it's, it's uh, going to help with the subject that I want to talk about when I get to the letter T. Um, and uh, I just lost the space, grabbed it up so fast. But uh, it talks about, let me try to find it again. Okay. Taking others into consideration and accepting others' uh, perspective. Okay, let me flip that over. And I have this book. I'm not trying to um, guide you into uh, any religion or anything, but I like reading inspirational books and sharing inspirational book. And this one's top topic is sharing the three angels message. And um, you can Google what the three angels message is, but I wanted to quickly show that this book has so many great uh, stories in there. It's from Amazing Facts, and you can go to AmazingFacts.com. You can get a Bible study guides and all that stuff, and they have um, good, good, good uh, magazines that you can read. Excuse me. I just seen some other. <laughs> Oh, they have children, Bible activity, steps to Christ for children, talks about the sanctuary, talks about the parables and the miracles of Jesus Christ. Uh, they have Bible stories matched that the kids can have. They play games and uh, scriptures, memory cards for scriptures. And um, it has little good short stories, God Bless My Family, Bedtime Prayers, a book called An Angel Rides With Me. Uh, Bible puzzles, all kind of stuff. And like I said, you can go to um, Amazon, uh, Amazon. You can go to, yeah, they probably on Amazon too, but you can go to amazingfacts.com and uh, they have um, 
a whole bunch of stuff that you can get for your kids. Um, not only at the ABC Adventist Bookstore, also uh, in Riverside, California, and different places. And they're online as well. Uh, and you can uh, find just some good inspirational books to read that's not just about religion. They're about inspir inspiring your life and inspiring the life of your children and your family. Okay, so that was my little plug-in for uh, the Three Angels message and uh, the Bible study. So, uh, also, oh yes, and I am a business major. I have a master's in business, and I don't work in a corporate office. I never wanted to work in a corp corporate office. I just wanted the knowledge of... Uh, what a um, a business person did and be mindful of it so I can take care of my own businesses and stuff like that. Um, but a friend of mine wrote uh, a book called The Startup on Business on a Budget by James Clark. And I give these to um, kids that I te uh, teach and, and work with so they have an idea how they can start their own little businesses, you know, to... Uh, to get in a business mind, because I believe in the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King when he said that we should inspire our kids to be in, um, uh, you know, have an economic uh, sense of, uh, of wealth and worth within them. Um, I know a lot of kids end up learning how to do business by being a drug dealer or, you know, uh, working in uh, illegal stuff. And sometimes that helps a person to understand. But I always tell people, as I learned from one of my friends who passed away, may she rest in peace, that the same tenacity that we used while we was on the streets, we can use that in school and we can use that on a, on a job and it will help us. Uh, and the thing about it is, is that the money is good money. It might be slow money, but it's show money. You know, and uh, it's not going to jeopardize your freedom or your life. You know, even living on earth, period, our lives are always in jeopardy. But when we put ourselves in a position to um, be out there in that type of element, then our chances of survival is even uh, close to short, uh, more so. So uh, I encourage you to teach your kids about business, teach them how to have bank accounts, teach them the value of a dollar, even though one day the, the dollar is not going to be that value, but, but teach them what you can now, right now, and um, show them about uh, saving uh, piggy banks, uh, you know, and, and learning how to set something aside, you know, just give them that um, sense of direction, because you're not going to always be around your your kids. And we're, I might not never be around mine, but mine's are grown now. But I still work with my grandkids and try to help them and teach them, you know, that, hey, you know, pretty soon they're going to have to leave the nest. And you don't want them to go out there and, you know, be able to get caught up in, in just any any game that comes along or listen to any Tom, Dick, or Harry or Sue to, that whispers in their ear. And, you know, they can lead them on in a whole different direction. Okay? So I don't know where that came from. But excuse me. I have to go get some water. Okay, so, oh, so with that little spill going on, excuse me for grunting, I had an operation on my, on my neck, and it, it bothers my um, vocal cords and stuff, so, today is week seven, and on, I'm on time, it's Sunday, because usually I try to have these every Sunday. When I can, when time allow it. If not, I'll try to do the next day or the next day. But I will post it. And uh, it's S-T-U. S-T-U. And I put S is for salvation. Your, mine, yours, and ours. There was an old movie called that with Lucille Ball and, uh, what was that, Henry Fonda? It was called Yours, Mine, and Ours. And uh, they was a blended family that got together and they had like... What, what, 19, 20 kids in a household when they got married? I think she had eight or nine and he had 10 or something, but it was, I love that movie. It's a classic. But for me, my salvation has always been important to me, but I was so rebellious, so headstrong. I didn't, I didn't listen because I was going through so much uh, turmoil in my life that 
I kind of put that on the back burner. And if you uh, happen to get my book, Sidewalk Tales, that's one of the first stories I talk about is the story about Sister Consoli and how she picked up all the kids in the neighborhood, black, white, brown, Chinese. She didn't matter. She just brought the kids to the church because that was her mission. And her church is called uh, uh, Christ Mission Christ Mission School or something, Bible School or something like that. But she taught us. She taught us a lot. I still know scriptures to this day because of that. And I tried to emulate her in my life, you know, even when I was out there on the streets. But um, when I learned about salvation, main, mainly, even though I was raised up in a Baptist church, I learned from Sister Consoli. I did not understand it completely at that time. But she taught us well. She taught us through film. She taught us taught us through scriptures. And I love it. She had a, a thing like a board on here, but it was a bigger board. And the more Bible verses that you learn, the bigger your prize is. She didn't let leave nobody out. Even if you said one uh, Bible verse, she got a gift. Whether it was something this small or smaller, you got a gift. She left no child out. And, um, Afterwards, she'd give us some little stale donuts and, and cookies. Sometimes they'd be fresh. <laughs> and um, that in intrigued us to come back. And so she knew how to get us in there. So I use a lot of what she taught me in my life and um, uh, on the streets and um, and when I went back and got, say, got my life saved. So uh, salvation to me is very important, very important. I knew at an early age that I wanted to be a child of God. I wanted to be a Bible worker, but some of my friends would laugh at me, stuff like that. Then I said, oh, I want to be a teacher. Or then I wanted to be a track star. Then I wanted to be a movie star. Then I wanted to be a singer and on and on and on and on and on. But somewhere deep in my heart, I always knew that I wanted to be close to Jesus Christ. And when Sister Casoli would talk about Jesus Christ, she made him seem like, you know, it was just the ultimate place to be, you know, in his bosom, you know. And I remember um, that one song she used to sing, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice, praise the Lord. And when she hit that high note, praise the Lord. And she was get like she would literally get on her tiptoes, and I thought that was just so cool, you know. And so it, it inspired me to want to sing, you know, and sing more and stuff like that. So she really, really taught me a lot. And then later on, you know, I got abused. I went through drugs. I went to jail, and but I stayed in school. I stayed in school because those are the two things that I loved doing. I loved going to church and I love being at school and like I said you know you be around your friends and stuff like that and they'll be like oh you think you're smart you just that like that and they're trying to change your mind and so you know you're going in the direction of the streets you know and then one day I looked up and everybody that I was protecting or everybody that was laughing at me for being smart they end up getting good jobs and and uh doing doing the most you know and going to school and stuff like that and I was like these fools was laughing at me and now look at them, you know, but I didn't let that bother me. I just went on and start doing what I needed to do, you know. So um, long story short, salvation, you know, I believe in salvation. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I know as a black person, uh, they say we come from Africa. We come from uh uh, Muslim country, we come from Moors, we we come, we are the, the lost tribe of Israel, we this, that, and we that, and the other. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. I do know that, as it says in the Bible, I think it was Joshua, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what was passed down to me, and I've studied religion. I was in La Sierra University uh, doing a religious Oh, uh, studies and everything like that. I was going to be a, a, a pastoral assistant, uh, a pastor assistant. And so uh, I got a chance to visit all that. And I, and I went on my own and I looked at all kind of different things. And then when I became a seven day Adventist, I liked their teachings. I liked what it, it represent and it fit what was going on inside of my story. So that's why I say, I don't try to put nobody's religion on, 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 um, on blast or anything like that, but I know what works for me, you know, and I know that, uh, a lot of 
These other churches have a lot of validity to it. And I believe that's why the Lord said, let the wheat and the tares grow together. Because when the harvest time comes, he's going to do all the picking. He's going to be doing, doing all the choosing. So the only thing that I realize that I have to do for my salvation is to continue to pray to the God that I believe in. And uh, as we're going to talk about a little, in a little bit about trust, I trust in the God that I believe in, and uh, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when I call upon his name, you know, things happen. Things happen, you know. So for me, for my salvation, my salvation is in God the Father, you know, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, I love, I love, even when I was out there on the streets, I loved going to church. People used to laugh at me, call me hypocrite, whatever. They'd be like, you're so high, you going to church? Yes, I'm going to church because I know one day I'm going to go up in that church house and something going to hit me and it's going to change my life. And it did, basically. It did, you know. Um, and that's a whole other story. But um, I think about uh, your salvation. What you have to do is you have to pray. You Like we say in, in AA, uh, they say, you know, pray to a God of your understanding. So, you know, whether you uh, go for Christianity, whether you go for Buddhism, whether you go for being a Muslim or whatever, you have to pray inside of you to feel what you need to feel so you can get direction, so you can get guidance. I'm not saying just pray to any and everybody. I'm just saying that when you call on the name of God, he will answer you. He will hear you and he will direct you. He will give you guidance. He will give you leadership. He will give you discernment. He's going to do all of that. So I'm saying if you do not know where you belong in terms of your salvation, I would say try God. Try God. Try calling on God. Just, you know, like, Lord, I don't know what I want. I don't know who you are. I don't know what I should believe in or whatever, but I pray that you help me so I can understand because I don't want to get lost because one thing about it, one thing about it, we all going to leave this earth. We're going to leave this earth. Some of us are coming back in a whole different mindset and everything else because we're going to be with the, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the thing of it is that we all live in here. You know, uh, you can see that by death. We have death right now, but there is a life after after death. If you believe in the God that I believe in says that you have life after death, if you trust and believe in uh, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that's totally up to you. That's yours. And the reason why I say ours, I say ours, I say that as a collective body because, as I said, we all have to leave here and my god says that every knee shall bow before we leave this earth everybody gonna know that there is a god and i'm gonna leave you with this because i always say i'd rather go to the end believing and trusting that there is a god and find out that there isn't a god but i know i led the best life that i can live as a human being because i don't want to be living in chaos and confusion and all like that but i don't want to not live and believe in a God and then get to the end and realize that, hey, there he is, you know? So that's what I'm saying. While you on this journey, while we, while this is our journey on this earth together, while we're on this journey and not knowing and understanding what's going to happen afterwards, I would say trust and believe in the Lord God Almighty because it's better to live a good, righteous, solid life with humility and love and kindness and all that good stuff than to live with so much chaos and strife in your life till when, whether you, you die in vain or out of vain or whatever, you know, you're going to die miserably. You know, so if I die, I want to die happy. Okay. All right. then. So I'm about at 15 minutes, a little over 19 minutes, but I just wanted to tell you that, you know, your salvation is, is important and you need to, I'm not going to say you need to, I'm sorry about that, but I would say, I would like to suggest to you that if you don't have a church home, if you don't have a spiritual uh, understanding of what 
the uh, what uh, God is to you or whatever, I would just say, you know, just call out and, and say, Lord, help me because I need to know. I need to know what to do, where to go, and then be a, a, a acceptance of what uh, your answer is. Okay. All right. So trials, trials and trust. I put that together. And because sometimes we go through our trials, we lose all kind of hope. We lose all kind of trust in people, you know, especially like if you're in a relationship and you feel like, well, I'll never love again. I'll never love again. You know, I've said that so many times and I'll be like that song. I'm looking for love. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, Trials and tribulations are something that we need to have in our life because if we don't, if we don't have it, then we don't know where we sit again in the plan of salvation. If we don't have trials and tribulations, we can't come to know who we really are, you know, because a lot of times people uh, walk around and they're just mad and they're just honoring and you're like, why, why, why? Because they've gone through some trials and tribulations and they didn't know how to process it. They didn't know how to process. So in that respect, that's why I'm glad that I did become a counselor because, you know, I was always trying to process stuff and always trying to look at stuff and always trying to figure out why, why this, why that, why that. But the thing of it is I never lost trust a lot of times excuse me a lot of times that's what got me in trouble trusting too much you know and a lot of times i was trusting too much and it caused me some unnecessary trials and tribulations because i put my trust in the wrong place so that's what i'm saying you got to pray you got to ask god to teach you to guide you to lead you on how to trust how to hope how to love how to care we have to ask him for everything as he said in all thy ways acknowledge him acknowledge him and ask him you know how can i do this how do i do that don't take it upon yourself lean not to your own understanding you know because if you lean to your own understanding you'll be uh and they talk about that in that book too you know you, you start being selfish you start being uh like uh proud you know being pr too proud and all like that so you know um uh, it leads to a lot of unnecessary trials and tribulations which also as we talked about earlier uh with the letter c choices our choices excuse me our choices can lead us into some very dangerous and crazy situation trials and tribulations as well Okay, and uh, the U for understanding, understanding, remember that song, what we need today is understanding, sing with me y'all, sing with me, I know you know the song, but yes, understanding is so important, I have a thing where I say some people are ignorant, and some people are ignorant, being ignorant is that you don't really have the understanding of what is the things that process in your mind, being ignorant it's just like you have no understanding whatsoever. You have zip. You're just a zip damn fool. Excuse my language. That's what that is, but the ignorant part. Because I know there are some people um, that, you know, you tell people, like somebody coming to the door, and uh, I had an uncle. And it, no, it wasn't your uncle. <laughs> I had an uncle, and then he was, oh, my gosh, he was ignorant. He can be so sweet sometimes, but about certain things, he was just so ignorant. And somebody can come through the door and say, hey, can I borrow sugar? Hell no, you can't borrow no sugar, you know. Yeah, you know, don't, don't, it's a store down the street and all like that. You know, just start talking trash, just, just doing some ignorant stuff, you know. And not realizing, you know, that if the person didn't need it, they might not really would have been asking, you know. But again, you get that discernment, you get that the spirit of discernment, which everybody don't have, like everybody don't have common sense. And then, uh, you know, you'll know when to help somebody, when not to help somebody. Because my friend sent me a thing on Facebook and it talked about that sometimes we can't help everybody because if we help everybody, then we're putting ourselves in the place of God. And God might not want us to help certain people because he's got some trials and tribulations that they need to go through. And not that God is putting them on them, but they're going to go through them because they done made some choices from way back or from uh, uh, recent that puts them in a place where they need to learn a lesson. Then here we come along bah, 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 and try to help them. And then they don't get that blessing. They don't get their blessing because we stepped in as God's trying to help them uh, out of the kindness of our heart. But that's why, again, we got to ask God, when do we help people? When do we not help people? When do we help ourselves? When do we not help ourselves? 
all that kind of stuff. It all falls down to lean not to your own understanding. So understanding brings about a unity. Uh, where there's understanding, there's unity. Because it's just like being in a conversation, being in a relationship, uh, being on a job and all like that. If you understand the process of the way you are, the processes of what is going on around you, the process of who you're with, who you're talking to, who you're loving, who you're hating, all like that. You know, it brings about a certain unity if only that unity is within yourself. So with this thing going on. I got 25 minutes with this thing going on with salvation, with trials, with trust, with uh, understanding and unity. It all goes together. It all goes together because if you understand what salvation really is and then you will get that trust that feeling, you will get that understanding of it. You have that unity, that peace that surpasses all understanding and you will learn to trust in the Lord with all your might. You know, even when I was out there, and like I said, people have been calling me all kind of hypocrites, stuff like that. But when stuff go on, they was like, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? And I didn't say nothing, but in my mind, I'd be saying, yeah, you was just calling me names. But, you know, but I wouldn't say nothing because I had in my spirit that I knew God wouldn't want me to be like that. So the same way that I am right now. I was the same way out there. The only difference, I was high and I was drinking and I was doing the most and I was in relationship after relationship and I was looking for love in all the wrong places. But then God sh 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 came in there and, and fixed me all up. You know what I'm saying? So now my sights on salvation is serious. That's that lipstick. That uh, my sights on salvation is serious. I have a better understanding. Everything I learned back there but wasn't using, I still apply it to today. I apply it to the way I help people. I play it, pl apply it to how I talk to people. I apply it on my job. I apply it in the store. I apply it in school. I apply it everywhere I go. And then my uh, trials and tribulations, I'm still going to trials. But the thing about it this now, today, is that I trust in the Lord with all my might, with all my heart, with all my soul. And I go to him before I make decisions. Sometimes I make quick decisions and I know I, I'll be like, oh, man, that was like running a red light because I knew I messed up. Because things didn't happen, then I'd have to, Lord, 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 come back, come back, help me, help me. Because I messed up, I messed up. I went before you, I went before you. Give me the opportunity to uh, uh, work this out, you know. So I talked to him like that. I talked to him like that. And then once again, understanding, I understand that uh, in order for me to be uh, a good person on this earth and to live until the day of salvation, that I have to keep my eyes focused on the good stuff. You know, I know that there's going to be a lot of bad stuff around and everything like that. But for the most part, you know, I try to uh, live life to the best of my ability. And it's not because I'm older. It's not because I'm 64. Because, hey, I could get drunk. I can get high. I can do the most. I can, hey, 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 to the rest of my days. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what I'm about. I'm not about that anymore. I'm about trying to get my life together. Together, because God says that He says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. Everything else will be added to you um, for you. you. You can't want for anything else when you give your trust to the Lord. He takes care of your trials. You know, He sets your name in stone for your salvation. You know, He gives you understanding. He gives you that unity to be with Him." You know, so, hey, it's uh, 29 minutes and uh, 28 minutes. And I just want to say, I'm sorry, uh, this was kind of good, but uh, I had to cut it short. But I hope you got something out of it, blessed assurance. And I just want to pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the subjects tonight, Lord Jesus. I know our salvation is important, Father God. And I know you don't want to see anybody perish, Lord. So I just pray that you help my brothers and sisters out there who are still struggling, Father God. I pray that you lead them to the truth, Father God, because you say the truth will set them free. And you say that Jesus Christ is the way, the light, and the truth, Father God. The life, Father God. And, and I know, Father God, that that is to be so. Uh, because I've seen it, I felt it, and I heard your voice, Father God, and I've seen it so many times in other people's lives. So, Lord, I pray that you be with my brothers and sisters and help me in that respect, Father God. 
if I said or did anything, Father God, to uh, hurt or harm anybody in any way, I apologize, Father. I give it to you, Lord Jesus, and I pray, Father God, that uh, uh, you will bless us as we go into week eight. I pray that I'll come back on next Sunday and be able to share the word with my brothers and sisters again. In my name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Hang in there. Ooh, we got like 40 minutes. <laughs> and so I just want you to say, if I was moving too fast for you tonight, uh, hit me up in face on Facebook or hit me up in, in um because I'm going to YouTube this, and then um, I'll be putting it out there. But I want you to know salvation is real and it's serious, and we need to get ourselves together so that we can meet on them pearly, pearly gates and on them golden roads, or whatever they call streets. <laughs> I said golden roads, the golden streets. All right, then. We had 30 minutes. Take care. God bless you. Peace out.